to give a talk here, and uh, I thank the organizers, in particular Professor Liu, for the kind invitation. And today I'm going to talk about some basic framework of quantum Feynman calculus, and then uh, I should like to discuss one uh, recent topic uh, on uh, here I mentioned, uh, quantum Feynman derivatives and its application to implementation problem. That is my today's uh, tema. This is a problem. Okay, let's start with quantum Feynman's calculus. I should like to show you the most basic part, basic framework of our study. And first of all, my concern is the boson Fock space. The boson Fock space is the most basic concept in the quantum field theory as well as uh, stochastic analysis. And this H is just a L2 space over certain uh, major space, T. T can be a manifold or some discrete set and so forth. But uh, for simplicity, for example, you can consider T as uh, just a real line. Then a gamma over H is a so-called boson Fock space. That is a Hilbert space consisting of all sequence of functions, Fn, but each Fn is just a symmetric L2 function. And the norm is defined by this uh, summation. And uh, this space is uh, just a collection of such a sequence of functions satisfying this norm, uh, finite norm condition. Okay. And then uh, there are two basic operators acting on bottom fox space. And one is called annihilation operator at a point T. The annihilation operator acts on this particular vector. This is a special vector in this bottom fox space. And then uh, the action is given by this form. Just taking n times C of T, that's the evaluation of at a point T. And then uh, C tensor n minus 1. Therefore, AT sends this vector one step down. And then a joint operator is called creation operator at a point T. And the action is given by this. This is just uh, here appears. This for, for this special vector, the action is given by this. The C tensor N tensor product with delta function at T. Therefore, this operator sends this vector one step up. This is the basic operators. And later I will formulate these operators correctly. But uh, one can expect, because this operator uh, send this vector upwards, and this adjoint send this vector downwards. Therefore, combination gives you all kind of operations. So, and formally, such a, such a general operator uh, is written in this form. This is uh, just a weight function, and this is a combination of these two operators. And then uh, summing up all the possible, possible combination of L and M. And such kind of object appears in the very early work in the quantum field theory. For example, Hag used this uh, kind of expression, and also Belezin, and Clay also more mathematical way. I should like to formulate this kind of object using the white noise theory. Okay, white noise approach. So white noise approach is, roughly speaking, that is a distribution theory on infinite dimension space. So first, I prepare a uh, given triple for H. This is just L2 over T. As I told you, T can be a uh, real line for simplicity. Okay, then uh, we take a test function space and the general function space. And of course, and, uh, there are some machinery behind, but for example, you can think E as a space of Schwartz test function, and E star is the uh, uh, space of general function, for example, temporal distributions, and such a structure I need. That is a uh, uh, triple for H. Then uh, we form the Fox space over this Gelfand triple. So gamma H, as I already already uh, introduced, that is the boson Fox space over H. Although it is not Hilbert space, but uh, you can imagine. This E is also uh, something like boson Fox space over E. And this is uh, definition, for example. And 
and the is the uh, dual space of this. Therefore, we have this triplet that is called Gelfand triple. And then uh, here is some small remarks. And the famous Venus Ito Seeger isomorphism said that this boson fox space is isomorphic to L2 over the Gaussian space. Easter is this space, and mu is the standard Gaussian measure uh, introduced on this space. And then uh, we can consider L2 space, but that is isomorphic, canonically isomorphic to the boson fox space. Therefore, this triplet. This E is a subspace of gamma, but E plays the role of space of test functions on this infinite dimension space. And E star is a larger space than gamma H. So we can consider, if you think this L2 space in the middle part, then E star is just a space of general function on E star. That is the infinite dimension vector space. So this machinery um, is uh, give you uh, some framework of infinite dimensional distribution theory. Oh yes, and this is uh, I didn't mention anything about construction, but for example, EP you can introduce a sequence of norms, and then uh, EP is a completion to that uh, norm, and EP itself is a Hilbert space, but uh, from the topology of H, EP had, uh, has a stronger topology than H. Then we can take a sequence of such Hilbert spaces and taking an intersection or project to take it. Yes, yes, but uh, that is uh, linearly ordered. So on, you can think only the integer part, it's okay. And, uh, but uh, for some computation, it is more convenient to deal with uh, real P. But uh, this is uh, linearly ordered, so uh, no difficulty. Uh, okay, now I consider, I am interested in the operators, so I use this terminology. A continuous linear operator from E to E star, that is uh, from E to E star, so this is uh, in some sense a generalized operator from the aspect of the boson fox space. But such an operator is called white noise operator. Then, uh, for example, the continuous operator on, from E to itself, or continuous operator from E star into itself, or bounded operators on boson fox space. Such operators are all, conti all continuous operator from bracket E to E star, therefore white noise operator. So the white noise operator includes many interesting operators. So that is our starting point. So, okay, so internal kernel operator. So this is some technical result. Using the white noise theory, uh, such a annihilation operator and creation operators behaves very smoothly. Therefore, we can consider this kind of integral expression. First of all, this is the composition of operators. That is a well-defined operator and becomes white noise operator. But moreover, uh, dependence with respect to this suffix is very smooth. Therefore, we can take kappa as a distribution. So this is a canonical bilinear form. This kappa plays the role of distribution. And this operate part play, plays the role of test function. That is a good point. Then we can define white noise operator. This is just a, therefore, formal integral expression. So as a matter of fact, we need to define this operator by using uh, canonical bilinear forms. But uh, this expression is more equal. It's easy to understand what is going on. Okay. So one uh, uh, basic result is this. So every white noise operator has the infinite series expansion in terms of integral kernel operators. This is just like a Taylor expansion of function. It is very useful. And this expression is a mathematical uh, claim for the, at the beginning I mentioned every white, Fox space operator is a combination of creation and animation operators. 
But uh, this is a mathematical uh, uh, statement for that. And actually, Berezin used this kind of expression for bounded operators in a weak sense. This integral kernel operator is not bounded operator. Any, or except scalar part, L equal M equal zero, that corresponds to scalar operator. But except scalar operator, every integral kernel operator is unbounded. But the summation can be bounded, <laughs> that's the interesting part. But uh, therefore, analysis is very difficult for if you use only the Fox space gamma. But uh, Berezin did it, and uh, for bounded operator, in some sense, he, he claims that, something like this. And also, Cray uh, introduced uh, distribution theory, and they, uh, he, he discussed this kind of expression. Okay. So, so, now we jump to some expression like this. So, you remember this integral kernel operator is a combination of creation and annihilation operators. Therefore, every operator C is, uh, roughly speaking, combination of annihilation creation operators. Therefore, let's consider such operator as a function of annihilation and creation operators. And here, S and T run over the T, parameter space T, can be continuous. So there are many, many parameters here, continuously many parameters. But nevertheless, I can think this operator as a function of creation and creation operators. So if you see this expression, I am interested in discussing derivative of this operator with respect to AS or AT star. AS and AT star are now considered as a coordinate. Okay? So I'm interested in the derivative. That is my main topic today. So counterpoint not derivative. Ah, first of all, in a classical context, that was called by white noise derivative or now HIDA derivative. So if you, if you know some stochastic analysis, then uh, you can consider this object. This BT is a Brownian motion, standard Brownian motion. This dot means uh, time derivative. The time derivative of Brownian motion is called white noise. So this is a function of white noise. Phi is a function of white noise. But uh, white no T runs over some interval in the real line. Therefore, there are many, continuously many, coordinate system here. So the derivative or variation <laughs> uh, is uh, symbolically written in this form. But this object was realized by using so-called Hida derivative or stochastic derivative. Or many people actually introduced this concept. And in my terminology, this is nothing else, the action of annihilation operator to phi. But anyway, in a classical context, there are such uh, considerations. And here, important thing is B dot T behaves like scalars, of course. And B, T, B dot T, there are many coordinate systems. So there are coordinate functions, coordinate map. But these maps are commutative because these are scalars. But uh, in a quantum context, I mentioned this expression. Here are two series of coordinates. But these are, okay, just a, as a coordinate, but these are not commutative. AS, AT star are not commutative. That, is, that gives you some more difficulty. But uh, nevertheless, we should like to define this object. And of course, people can imagine what kind of action should be expected. For example, this one. This is a linear combination of uh, annihilation operators. Okay? T is continuous parameter, but uh, you can think just a summation of f of t. But t runs over some numbers. Then this is a linear function. What is the derivative of this? This derivative pick up a coefficient of as because this is the linear function. So the result should be this. This is the expected action of this derivative. Similarly, if you consider quadratic function, 
This is the quadratic function, a s a t. Okay. Then what is the expected action of this operator? This operator picks up the coefficient of a s. But here are two a possibilities of appearing a s. First, this a s. Therefore, the coefficient is f s t a t and integral. So this one. The second one is also, of course, here a t. T runs over all possible values. Therefore, such values include a s. Therefore, another part appears. This is exactly the same as you know the derivative of polynomial. So this is the same. Hmm? Uh, if f s t is symmetric, then this is just a twice of. So if f is not symmetric, I should like. Right in this way, but if f s t is symmetric, then you can combine these two and just take put two here, two times this integral. So this is exactly the same as the usual derivative of uh, polynomials, and uh, this is also. So such action may be useful. So I should like to discuss this kind of derivative and. Actually, um, some time ago, with Professor G, we discussed this kind of stuff, and finally, the, this simple definition works very well. Unfortunately, now I don't take uh, a t, but uh, this a zeta is so-called smeared operator, namely a zeta is uh, just an integral of a t, because if a if you consider only a t, then a joint acts on uh, only on the distribution space, so it's not very convenient. So we take so-called smeared operator like this, and this a zeta is also called annihilation operator and a star creation operator. And the important property is this: both are continuous operator acting on test functions as well as on general functions. Therefore. For every white noise operator, we can consider so the commutator. This is a zeta minus, uh, excuse me, a x minus x a, such a usual Lie bracket, the commutator. So the commutator commutator is well defined as an operator. So we can define these actions, and similarly we de define this. So these are called creation derivative and annihilation derivative. Hmm. And some properties. Of course, as you see, these two are closely related. Actually, they are in some sense adjoined each other. And also, and from the topological point of view, this v zeta plus minus are continuous linear maps from this operator space into operators. So white noise operator is sent to white noise operator continuously. Therefore, very nice operation. Mm. OK, uh, but uh, here, this part I will skip. OK, now example. <coughs> um, the first two lines gives you a notation. This is uh, based on the famous Kernel theorem of Schwartz. <coughs> If you have an operator S, E to E star, then there is a two parameter, two variable distribution tau, such that they are related in this way. This is an integral operator. Okay? If you write down S in a form of integral operator, then the kernel is written by tau S. This is a usual correspondence. Okay, now first example. This is so-called generalized gross Laplacian. It is quite a basic ob object in white noise theory uh, because this is a quadratic function. Linear function is somehow trivial, but a quadratic one is the uh, simplest but uh, very interesting object. And this is a quadratic function okay, in annihilation operators. 
and this is called growth Laplace. Okay, what is the derivative? You can imagine immediately because this expression doesn't contain any creation, a star part. Therefore, the derivative with respect to a star part should be zero. And annihilation derivative, there are two annihilations, therefore, there are some things happen. So, we, I will show you how to get it. It's an easy computation. And by using it rather formally, mathematically, we con <coughs> very rigorously, if you want to get it very rigorously, then you compute the commutator and so forth. But here I I give you a very shortcut proof, more intuitive. Now, what is dt plus? dt plus. Ah, this is obvious. So dt plus. dt plus picks up a coefficient, the coefficient of a t. Therefore, there are two parts because this picks up the coefficient of a t. Therefore, here a t. Therefore, coefficient is this one. But on the other hand, is Parameter S also runs over all parameter T space. Therefore, there appears T here also. Therefore, we have this. Now, this zeta action is just an integral of this object with zeta T. So, the action here, I put zeta T and the integration over T. Then we get this too. This is such a, such a simple line gives you the result. So, from computational point of view, also, these derivatives are not so difficult to deal with, I think. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. If, ah, okay, okay. And first of all, rigorous proof should be to compute commutator directly with this operator. It's possible. It's also not very difficult. But here I wanted to mention the more intuitive way of understanding the situation. And actually, such a point-wise derivative can be defined. I omitted uh, because of lack of time, and uh, it's some more technical time. Uh, we need some technicality. But uh, this this computation also can be uh, uh, justified. Mm. But here, I should, why I put here? Because and, uh, I should like to convince you how easy to get the result by using this kind of computation. Mm. Okay, this is an example one. Um, uh, this is just uh, a joint of gross Laplacian. Then the result is very similar. Now, twice stars. This is also a quadratic function of these uh, creation annihilation operators. Then here, no annihilation. Therefore, annihilation derivative equal to zero. This is obvious. And creation part, you can, you, we need to compute. But uh, I omit it. And uh, final quadratic form is this. This is also quadratic. So this is called conservation operator. And the derivative looks like this. And this is a exercise. So I don't give you any discussion about this. So such a derivative is uh, probably interesting because derivative gives you differential, therefore differential equation. So I, we are interested in now differential equation, including such derivatives. Before that, I need weak product. Uh, in physics, and uh, this is also called a normal ordered product. For two Fox space operators, in physics they are called observables, but uh, there are some special product of these two objects. That is called weak product, or normal ordered product, and uh, denoted by this symbol. And uh, this is the uh, analytic definition so I don't go into details, but uh, and we use uh, so-called exponential vectors, and uh, this is a matrix element of this operator. Using such matrix element, we can define the weak product like this. This is not so straightforward to 
see what is going on there. But uh, this formula is enough for us. This is a white noise operator, and this is an annihilation operator. The annihilation weak product of annihilation operator and white noise operator are commutative. And the result is this. This is usual composition of two operators. This is the usual composition, okay? And this is uh, for adjoint. Also, this product commutative. And the result is this. This is usual composition of operators. So, annihilation operator always on the right hand side. Creation operator appears always in left hand side. That is called a weak product. Okay? Then uh, from the definition also you can see, because the right hand side is uh, just a product of functions, therefore commutative. So weak product is commutative. Okay? Com composition of operators is not com commutative, of course, but a weak product is commutative. Okay, now, just a terminology. So, continuous map from white noise operator into white noise operator is called weak derivation. Okay, if this formula is satisfied. This is nothing to doubt, this is just a usual definition of derivative. Okay. Now, the, we, let's notice this theorem. The creation and creation derivatives are weak deri derivations. Okay. Therefore, with respect to weak derivatives, the zeta plus minus act as differential operator. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Ah, xi, 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 large xi in Greek. <laughs> this, the tech, tech produced these symbols. <laughs> uh, this is the proof, but the proof is uh, based on the computation. Okay, so now differential equation. So, what, uh, what we are discussing is very simple differential equation. This one. Okay. Here D is a weak derivation. For example, creation derivative, annihilation derivative, or they are linear combinations. C is unknown operator. And G is a given coefficient. But here weak product. Okay. Weak product commutative. Okay. So G C G diamond C coincide with C diamond G. So no matter which order. So this is differential equation, okay? To solve this, I need exponential function with respect to weak product. So I introduce this new symbol, weak exponential of y. We have a new product called weak product, therefore we need the exponential with respect to this weak product. And this series is not necessarily convergent in this space. So whenever this series convergent, we define this weak exponential. Okay. So I use this symbol. Then general result is this. So I want to solve this differential equation. To do that, I need to find why why not operator y satisfying this equation? Derivative y is equal to g. g is a coefficient. So first, we need to find out y. But in this statement, we, I, we assume that there exists such an operator y satisfying this relation. Moreover, I assume that weak exponential is defined because it may be divergent in this space. So uh, it's defined. That is assumption. Then. Every solution of this equation looks like this. Because this is a first order differential equation, there may be uh, appear uh, arbitrary part, but here f is arbitrary part. 
So here, C is weak exponential of Y. Y is given by this. Weak product with F. F is an arbitrary operator satisfying this property. So this is uh, one of the main part. Proof is uh, simple, but uh, this has uh, many applications. Um, the proof is this. You can check directly. This is the solution of this one. Okay. It's simple. Conversely, every solution, C, must be in this form. How to prove? It's also easy. Let C be an so arbitrary solution to number three equation. Then we consider this one. Weak exponent is invertible in a usual way of the definition of exponential function. So we invertible, therefore we can consider this. Then F is a point noise operator and C is this. Therefore finally we need to check this one. Ah excuse this this one. So but this final relation df equal to zero is proved by direct computation by using some basic property of derivation. So this two line only. But you can check it and then we know every solution of this equation is of this form. So weak exponential of y, y is here and times some arbitrary part. Okay, now example, simple example. Let's consider this differential equation. d zeta plus c equal to zero, what is c? But it's easy to see because d zeta plus is a creation derivative. So it picks up the coefficient of creation part. But the creation part equal to zero, it means no creation part. So the Fock expansion of such operator is given by this. Only annihilation part appears. I don't give any uh, mathematically uh, concrete proof, but uh, I, I, I am explaining using more naive words. Okay. This is also similar. If d zeta minus c equal to zero, it means there is no annihilation part. Therefore, c contains only creation part. You can prove that mathematically, of course. So, uh, for expansion like this. So, if you have both, both relations, then c must be scalar operator because c has this form as well as this form. Therefore, only the lm equals zero part remains. It means c is a scalar operator. That is a reproduction of irreducibility of com commutation relation. That is uh, well known. And also, let's consider second. This is a little bit more complicated. Mm. Not very but, uh, complicated. This is a linear equation. Okay. So first, we need to find out why satisfying this relation. You remember? And this is a derivation, derivation, and the y. We need to find out y, which sat, of which derivative is the coefficient. So we need to find out this. But we know, because this is a linear function, therefore y should be quadratic. So it is easy to find. Actually, the gross Laplacian is a solution. And then, and moreover, we know the weak exponential of gross Laplacian is well defined operator. The series convergent. Therefore, every solution to seven, number seven, is given by this form. Now, f is arbitrary operator satisfying this relation. So, in such a way that we we have many characterization of operators by using differentials. And this is a little bit more. Complicated. If you add one more condition, then I, you, we can define F more concretely. Actually, this gives you a characterization of the exponential function of gross Laplacian up to constant factor. So such a differential equation characterizes operators. That is uh, my viewpoint. Okay. It, uh, I, thought, I don't know, but it's, uh, I, to my best knowledge, it's uh, somehow new, new aspect. 
Okay, now final part. Implementation problem. So implementation problem, I mean, uh, at, excuse me, first I need notation. This A is a annihilation operator, creation operator, and I consider such linear combinations, S and T are operators. B star is a just a dual, a joint operator of B, zeta. Now, implementation problem is this. We have an action of annihilation operator here. B, this B is uh, also a contingent operator from E to E as well as E star to E star. So we consider this diagram. So this B acts on E star, A acts on E. We would like to find out a continuous operator U satisfying this commutative diagram. U, B is equal to A, U, something like that. And as well as uh, for adjoint operators. So I should like to find out such a U satisfying both diagram. <coughs> if you know a little bit about the so-called Bogolyubov transformation or such a transformation, then uh, immediately you are interested in when B, this B, transformed creation and creation operators satisfy canonical commutation relation as well. So this is a this is a condition for this commutation relation. And this relation is a condition for this. So if you add these two conditions, then these transformed annihilation creation operators again satisfies commutation relation. So such a case is probably more in interesting in physics. But I don't uh, I don't use so actively like this. Uh, later in a statement I use, but the problem itself I, we, we formulate like this. Okay, now I'll approach. So, commutation, oh, excuse me, commutative diagram is uh, very simple. U A is B U. Okay, this one, this diagram means composition of two operators, two ways, coincide. So, very easy, like this. But here, I use the explicit form of B. B is just a linear uh, transformed creation annihilation operator. This is by definition. Then, here appears A is zeta. Therefore, a u minus u a gives you derivative. So this one is derivative part. This is a correction. And this is just the same. Therefore, d s zeta plus u is equal to this one. This is just a simple computation. And here u u a a. Therefore, we are join these two terms like this, it's okay. Now, it's very important. Here, A is right hand, right hand side. Here is the left hand side. That is weak product. Therefore, we can use this symbol. This is very important because here U appears like this here. So. If you use composition of operators, the action is complicated because A acts from the right, A star acts from the left. It's not good. But if you use weak product, the action is only one side. That is uh, important. Part. So situation becomes very simplified. And then finally, this commutative relation is equivalent to this differential equation. So to obtain such u, it is sufficient to solve this differential equation. But this differential equation is a special type of the general one that I mentioned, or a very simple one, because this is a linear differential equation. 
you appear here and you appear here. But with respect to which product? Okay. And similarly, for the second diagram, we have this one. A little bit more complicated, but not so much. And then, this is the solution to the first one. So this is the main commutative relation. Then the solution is this form. And this is the dual of gross Laplacian. T and S appears in B. And the lambda is a conservation operator. And F is arbitrary part, something like this. And in this case, the weak product is not a usual composition of operators. But in a special case, it reduced to usual composition of operators. Actually, weak exponential of dual growth operation is just a usual exponential of the gra dual growth operation. And weak, pro weak exponential of this uh, object, we need to compute a little bit, but it is so-called the second condensation of this operator. So this is a more familiar notation. As a result, this u is uh, just uh, exponential of uh, gross operation and this is the uh, second quantization and f. These are usual composition of operators. So here I, my statement is in terms of weak exponential, but it reduces to usual exponential and operator, usual composition of operators. Okay, so how to proof is I already outlined. First, the commutative relation became differential equation, linear differential equation with respect to weak product, and the derivative is given by the creation derivative. We, therefore, we need to find out some solution, some, some operator whose derivative is coefficient. Coefficient is, I separate, coefficient here and here. But these are linear functions, therefore the solution must be quadratic. From that aspect, it's easy to find out the quadratic operator. Actually, this is a solution. This is a solution. Then the general solution of, to this equation 11 is written by weak exponential of these two and arbitrary part. So the rest is some small part. So mainly, main part is this. So I think it is uh, easy to understand what is going on. And also for the second commutative relation, we have result. I, I let's skip it. Proof is similar. And finally, joining together, we need some assumptions. But uh, finally, we get this kind of operator. So if we have two dia commutative diagrams, then what is u? The general form of u is determined by using our method. This is exponential of gross Laplacian and second quantization and exponential of gross Laplacian. So this is the final result. Proof is just a combination of the previous two theorems. Okay, now final remarks. So some years ago, already 10 years ago, uh, Professor Chun and Ji introduced the uh, generalized Fourier gas transform. General Fourier gas. What is it? It is of this form. Here, U is an operator. Then we know the, this is the generalized gross operation and exponential. This belongs to white noise operator. And for V, also operator, but the second condensation is also a white noise operator. Therefore, we can consider the composition of these two operators. Then, this G has two parameters, U, V. U, V, both operators. And then, they call it generalized Fourier gas transform. And a joint operator is called the Fourier Mera transform. And then, uh, our solution, this is constant, and this is exponential of dual growth. This is the uh, second quantization part, and this is exponential of growth. This composition, well defined, but if you see, very similar. Namely, 
this U is just a composition of general Fourier Gauss transform and general Fourier mirror transform. Okay. Therefore, this may be our new approach by using a differential equation may be give a new approach to Bogoliubov transformation because this composition is in a certain context called Bogoliubov transformation particularly concerning to the unitary if U is unitary it is uh, already known for a long time if U is not unitary then it's uh, something new and uh, finally um, yesterday I saw similar integral transform um, this is uh, A and B are just a scalar con uh, constant and we consider this Gauss integral Easter is uh, just a formal infinite dimensional space in that integral you can take uh, conti space of continuous functions and we know measure it's the same but this transform of function is just a special case of uh, this operator namely this u and v are scalar operator with scalar like this then this action gives you this one and also i've had that uh, a systematic study of the transformations based on uh, such uh, operator calculus will be presented by professor g so please discuss after his talk <laughs> okay thank you very much dr Ho. Also.